Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for what is quite a significant TBR as you probably gathered from the title of this video because in just over a year's time I'll be turning 30, it is my 29th birthday in a week or so depending on when you're watching this video and I've seen a lot of people do videos along the line of things I'd like to do before I turn 30. I don't have a ton of things like that because <laughs> I just feel like given experiences over the years you cannot necessarily put time limits on when you want to achieve certain things or when things are going to happen. So personally that kind of planning no longer works for me. But one thing I thought that might be fun is to have a look at my bookcases, particularly the physical books that I've perhaps owned for a little while, and consider the books that I would like to prioritise reading in the next year. So I would like to get to my 30s and have read these books for one reason or another, perhaps because they're in series I've been meaning to finish, or they're non-fiction books that I think I would really um, benefit from reading and learning from, or just books I've been saying I'm going to read for most of my 20s yet haven't. Now this is all very light-hearted, I am not going to beat myself up if I don't read all these books before I'm 30, but I think it'll be a fun TBR to reflect back on come 2022 when I do turn 30 to see how many of them I did read and how I still feel about reading them. So yeah, the plan pretty much is to share with you the 30 books I would ideally like to read before I turn 30, which is 12 months now, so this TBR is for the next 12 months, not intimidating at all. But before we do get into the list, I would like to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of this video, who are Skillshare, and I will be talking a little bit more about the Skillshare online learning platform later on in the video. So without further ado, let's have a look at the books. The first book I can see here, however, on my stack is Moving Pictures by Terry Pratchett. Now this is both a specific book on my TBR and a loose book on my TBR because my priority before I'm 30 is to read more Discworld. This book is set in Terry Pratchett's Discworld, on which he set, I believe, around 40 of his novels, and it's a series I absolutely adore. I've read more than half of. I've read in the sort of high 20s, I believe, but I still have a few left to read, and one of those is Moving Pictures. This is probably the one I'm most intrigued to pick up next and have been for a while, because it's the invention of the cinema in the Discworld. I've really loved in the past seeing how Terry Pratchett tackled the invention of different types of modern industry and entertainment, like in The Truth, which is all about the newspaper, or Raising Steam, which is all about trains, and this, like I mentioned to you, is obviously all about cinema and film, and I'm just really, really intrigued. It's one of his earlier ones that actually comes before a lot of the ones I've already mentioned to you. Like I said, I just want to tick more of his Discworld books off my list, so this is probably the one I'll read next, but more than anything, I just want to make sure I read a Terry Pratchett Discworld before I'm 30 and get my numbers up. Similarly, actually, I don't know how these books ended up next to one another is Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare. I'm always saying this, I really want to read more Shakespeare. I've only read six or seven of his plays and obviously he wrote a ton of plays. I have particularly been drawn to his sort of antiquity based ancient myth retellings in the past but this is one of his comedies which I've heard really incredible things about and is definitely the one at the top of my TBR although my main priority is just to read some more William Shakespeare. I believe it's specifically about a young man and young woman who have sworn off marriage but whose friends decide to trick them into thinking that the other one has feelings for the other one so there ends up lots of like secrets and misunderstandings so it also has that romantic twist and I'm just really really keen to Pick it up. I then have some poetry on my list which is probably no surprise and one of those is Autobiography of Red by Anne Carson. So this is another one so this one is actually inspired by Greek myth. It features the character of Heracles and follows a winged red monster named Geryon who falls in love with Heracles, I believe. It is obviously poetry and lots of different poems, but it's a collection of poems that tells a story. And I have always heard incredible things about Anne Carson. She always comes highly recommended if you're into poetry or Greek myth retellings, and I'm into both, so it's really shocking that I haven't read her yet, and I really want to have read her before I'm 30. We then have a People's History of Chicago by Kevin Koval. This is a collection of poems all about the ordinary people that make up 
Chicago and I just think that sounds really interesting. I believe the title is inspired by a piece of American history non-fiction that I haven't read but I've heard really interesting things about and I like that premise. I like that exploration of a place and a history through ordinary people so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. We then have another one I've been saying I'm going to read for the longest time and I do really want to read. I just want to read it at the perfect time but maybe need to accept that there's no perfect time and just to sit down and enjoy it. That is Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. So I've read three of Jane Austen's novels, obviously not including Sense and Sensibility, but of all the adaptations I've seen, and I've seen a lot, multiple of each of her books, Sense and Sensibility is my favourite. It's my favourite story. It's the adaptation, specifically the BBC miniseries adaptation that I love the most of all Jane Austen adaptations. It makes me feel such strong emotion and I've always found it so comforting when I'm feeling a little bit down I go to watch it yet have never read this book but I think the fact that I love the story so much on screen has also made me a little bit intimidated because I want to love the book as much and that's just a lot of pressure but I'm gonna make myself do it I'm gonna finally read The Sense and Sensibility. I then have some more recent additions to my TBR but that I really want to prioritise. The first one is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. This was a gift from my friend Leanne and she raves about this thriller. She's always telling me how much I'll love it and how it is a read in one sitting can't put down compelling story and obviously I'm sold because I really trust Leanne's thriller recommendations and I really just want to prioritise it because it was a thoughtful gift from a lovely friend and I want to see what it's all about because I keep saying I'm going to read it and have done for a few months but haven't, so yeah, want to read this. <laughs> we also have Chilling Effect by Valerie Valdez. This is a comedic science fiction novel about an astronaut and space cats, because look, there's little cats in these boxes wearing astronaut bubble helmets, futuristic versions of those, I suppose. And I have read so few comedic SFF books by women. Whenever I seem to pick up comedic SFF, it's by men, and I love a lot of those books, I love a lot of those authors, but it really means a lot to me to find women writing in genres I don't find them writing in a lot, and also really enjoy, so I'm hoping I'm going to love this one. We then have one that's been on my TBR for quite a while, and it's a non-fiction book called Bad News, The Last Journalist in a Dictatorship by Anjan Sudaram. This was a gift from my friend Jen. So she'd read this and thought it was a really excellent piece of non-fiction all about the Rwandan genocide and the silencing of the press and thought I would also really enjoy it and I very much trust that opinion and think it sounds really interesting. It's not something I've read much about so would love to be better educated on it and I have the book so I should read it. I have another non-fiction book here which is Antigone Rising, The Subversive Power of the Ancient Myths by Helen Morales. This only came out last year but I'd really like to read it in what I feel like is a timely manner because I think it's a really interesting book that deals um, with the way in which ancient myth, which can quite often be very sexist and stems from patriarchal classical societies, can actually mean something more and something different and something far more empowering to modern women and as a classicist, as an ancient historian, that's something I feel very passionately about and would love to read Helen Morales' take on. Something a little bit lighter that will hopefully make this TBR easier is a children's book and that is How to Train Your Dragon by Cressida Cowell. People are always recommending this to me and this was actually a gift from a very kind subscriber because I'm obsessed with dragons. Dragons are my favourite magical creature. In fact, dragons are probably just my favourite thing in the whole like imagined universe. <laughs> I love them and I actually love the film adaptation series of these books. I know they're a little bit different but I really do love the films so I would love to try the books and just see if they bring me all of the dragonish joy that I hope they will. The next two books are actually in a series and that is A Closed and Common Orbit and Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. So this is book two and three in Becky Chambers' Wayfarer series and she actually has a fourth book coming out very soon which I believe is also the final book in the series. So maybe this actually counts as three books but I won't put too much pressure on myself. I own books two and three and it's quite rare for me to own multiple books in a series 
further forward than what I've read, if that makes sense. Usually I would only own the next book, but obviously I own the next two books in this one. And that's because I adored book one. Book one was a five star read for me. It was one of my favourite books of 2020. It's one of my favourite sci-fi books of all time. And I really feel that I'm going to also love these two books. So I want to carry on with the series. I want to see what is next for side characters that we meet in book one, but that aren't the central focus of book one, because these are 100% character focused sci-fi novels. And and I love that about them. We then have Dead Girls by Selva Almada, which is sort of true crime feminist non-fiction. So I've not really ever read any true crime. I mean, I've read The Five by Hallie Rubenhold, but I don't think that necessarily counts as true crime because it's not about the crime. Um, and it's not something I'm really that drawn to, but it's something I'm curious about. I just want to find the right book in because I feel like almost any genre can work for anybody as long as you just find that right book. And this sounds like it could be it. It's about a spate of murders that took place in Argentina and the author explores the social and political ramifications of that, the fact that their murders were never solved and what it says more largely about society and about Argentina I guess. So I'm I'm really curious to read this one. We've got to keep a little bit of lightness and levity within these books however. So I do have another children's book which is The Long Lost Home book six and the final book in the Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place series by Mary Rose Wood. As you've probably heard me wax lyrically about these books multiple times on my channel. I won't go into too much detail but this is a middle grade series, probably my favourite middle grade series of all time and I've read all five of the previous books so really just want to tie things up. Similarly I actually have another sixth book in a series in which I've read the previous five of and that is Flame of Seven Waters by Juliet Merillier. Now this might actually be my favourite series of all time, not just within the genre which is medieval fantasy but I genuinely think it could be considered one of my favourite series of all time and I say that not having read the final book so I would feel much more comfortable making that claim if I had read the final book so that's something I plan on doing. But if you have been keeping count you might have noticed that that was book 15 of this TBR so we're halfway through my list and I thought that might be an apt time to take a little break and chat to you about the sponsor of today's video who I mentioned earlier are Skillshare. So if you haven't heard me talk about Skillshare in the past they are a regular sponsor here on this channel who provide incredible support to me creating content and also just one of my favourite websites. They are an online learning platform with thousands of classes available on pretty much every subject under the sun. They have helped me develop my writing, my organisation, my crafting skills and that's actually something I'm taking extra advantage of at the moment. I don't know what it is exactly, it could be multiple things but right now I am in such a crafting mood after not having done much crafting in a little while but whenever I do get back into crafting it brings me so much joy and maybe it's knowing that I'm a year away from 30 but I've been re-inspired to try some of my my favourite crafting activities from when I was younger and in particular it's sculpting with polymer clay. So there's been a massive uh, resurgence I feel of polymer clay online. In the past year or so people have been making the most incredible like statues and jewellery pieces and I've been seeing new and interesting independent businesses pop up everywhere and I've even been purchasing a few of their pieces myself. But I was always super into polymer clay as a kid. My mum used to buy me Fimo which is a brand of polymer clay and I used to make little sculptures. I adored it. I also was really into actual clay sculpt at school. It was my material of choice when it came to art class and it is something that I've kind of missed doing. So seeing everybody else's wonderful creations has just made me want to try doing it again for fun. I'm not planning on starting up my own business and I'm still interested in supporting other independent businesses but knowing that I enjoy using polymer clay and making things out of polymer clay, I've wanted to try my hand at making polymer clay jewellery and earrings because I honestly cannot have too many pairs of earrings. And I actually managed to find the most wonderful teacher on Skillshare who is Kylie Bennett. So she actually offers a whole range of artistic classes, but in particular, I have of course been enjoying learning from her easy clay earrings classes and it has been so much fun. I feel so inspired and it's something I just love to do while I'm listening to an audiobook or watching television or even with friends over Zoom where we all do our own little craft whether they be the same or different and I am really really loving it and it's just really reinvigorated my love of a craft I so very much enjoyed as a kid which is another win for Skillshare. If you would like to try out Kylie Bennett's classes or any of the existing or future classes that will be 
available on Skillshare as they're constantly updating their site, then I do actually have a link down below for the first 1,000 of you to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium through. So do make sure to give it a click and let me know if you recommend any classes in particular on Skillshare once you've given it a try or if you're already a member. But with that being said, thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's take a look at the second half of my 30 before 30 TBR. So I'm sure you've all been wondering where's the ancient literature at, Jean? Because you know I love my ancient literature, I'm an ancient historian and at this point I have read a lot. I've read most of what's on my shelves and I own most of what I want but there are a few things I've yet to read and I have two of those here. So the first one is Aristophanes Frogs and Other Plays. So this is a collection of three plays by the Athenian comedic playwright Aristophanes and I've read two of them already. So I have read Clouds and the Women at the Thesmophori which I believe are the other two plays in this collection. Yes that is correct but I have not read the title play which is Frogs and it is one of his most famous one of his probably most widely cited and I really feel like I'm missing a trick not having read it. We then have some Roman literature moving on from the Greek there with Fasti by Ovid and this is actually a long form piece of poetry about the Roman calendar which looks at the myths associated with every month in that calendar and I've always meant to read it so I would really like to have read it before I'm 30. We then actually have a few fairy tale or myth collections from cultures aside from Greece and Rome and the first one is this collection of fairy tales by George MacDonald. So George MacDonald was a Scottish folklorist and fairy tale collector and I've read a few of his pieces, a few of his longer fairy tales before as well as some that were bound up in other collections but I've never read his complete work and I really want to familiarise myself with it so this is definitely top of the TBR. Then moving away from Scotland but remaining in Britain we have some Welsh literature. This is the Mabinogion which is a piece of Welsh folklore which which tells the history of Britain and Wales and it includes such myths and legends as Arthur and Merlin which I've never read in their original sources so I'm really really looking forward to. We then lastly for the myth and legends collection have Hindu myths so this is from the Penguin Classics collection and it is obviously a compilation of Hindu myths which is something I've always wanted to read more of. I read quite a few collections of Hindu myths and legends when I was younger but have since as an adult so would love to do so and decided to pick this one up quite recently. We then have a book set in antiquity but not written in antiquity and that is The Emperor's Babe by Bernadine Evaristo. So this is a novel in verse, it is written in the verse format and it's about a Nubian woman living in Londinium which was a Roman settlement in Britain and I've just been meaning to read this book for ages, it's very different from a lot of the myth retellings and antiquity based books I have on my shelf so I'd really like to give it a shot. Then for a little bit more non-fiction we have Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paolo Freire. This is another one that's just been on my TBR for far too long. I bought this, I think, in the first year I moved to London, which was four or five years ago now. <laughs> and it's a work of non-fiction that looks at education in Brazil and the classism of education and the importance of education to finding freedom and I'm just really really interested in reading it both from a personal perspective of that is a topic and a subject I'm very very passionate about the importance of education and access to education but it's also just considered a bit of a classic so I wanted to give it a try. More non-fiction but another small one so hopefully easy to squeeze in in the next year is Abolition Democracy Beyond Empire Prisons and Torture by Angela Y Davis. So this is another book by Angela Y Davis on prisons and incarceration but specifically about torture of prisons and the Abu Ghraib prison scandal so I think this was going to be a really interesting and important companion to the work I've already read by this author. If you were starting to worry that a lot of these books looked a little bit short so where's the challenge however we then have Mad, Bad and Sad which to my eye is a pretty chunky non-fiction title. It is subtitled A History of Women and the Mind Doctors from 1800 to the Present and it's by Lisa Apignanassi. It is all about the treatment of women's mental health from the 1800s to now and all of the biases and sexism ingrained in the treatment of women's health including explorations of topics like hysteria and it's something I've really wanted to read more non-fiction about for quite some time so don't want to leave it any longer. Then a couple of fancy books just to shake things up. First up we have The White Mare 
book one in the Dalriada trilogy by Jules Watson. So this is a romantic ancient historical fantasy I believe which is very very often recommended to readers and fans of Juliet Marillier who have already mentioned in this video and you know as one of my favourite authors of all time. So I've been meaning to read Jules Watson for ages as well because if she's anything like Juliet Marillier I'm going to love her and if I am about to finish my favourite series by Juliet Marillier I'd like to know I have another author waiting in the wings so this could be it and I'm hoping it will be. We then have a book by a fantasy author I have already read and that is Dragon Unleashed by Grace Draven. So this is the so this is book two in the Fallen Empire series and the sequel to Phoenix Unbound, which I will say is not my absolute favourite book by Grace Draven, but I still very much enjoyed it. And I was so excited for the sequel because it's all about a side character from book one who is also a dragon and a female dragon at that, which is so cool because I feel like dragons are often men when they are depicted as um, shapeshifters. And I'm really excited to have a dragon shapeshifter fantasy novel about a woman plus it's Grace Draven who I adore and I cannot wait. On the topic of Grace Draven however I would like to add another book to this TBR by her which I have on my Kindle and that is The Epos King which is book three in the Wraith Kings series and that series begins with Radiance which you may have heard me talk about in the past because it is my favourite romance novel of all time as well as one of my favourite fantasy novels and book three actually follows side characters from books one and two so we have a new romance to follow plus we get to learn more about characters who we have already been introduced to but not had the perspectives of and I'm super excited about that. Also on my Kindle I'd really like to prioritise In Black and White by Alexandra Wilson which has the subtitle A Young Barrister's Story of Race and Class in a Broken Justice System. So this is about a UK based lawyer and her experience obviously of racism within the system. I imagine both from her perspective as a lawyer and also um, in, in incarceration rates perhaps and representation. I am really really interested in justice I'm really, really interested in finding more books about the UK justice system because I've read far more about the US justice system. So this is one, that, like I said, I really want to prioritise because they seem to be much fewer and far between. I would then also like to make sure I get to A Study in Scarlet Women, which is by Sherry Thomas. And this is the first any Sherlock Holmes retelling series where Holmes is actually a woman and I am so excited for that because I don't think I've ever read a direct Sherlock Holmes retelling where he becomes a she and you all know I'm obsessed with Sherlock Holmes you can't see it but there's a shelf above me and behind me right now which is dedicated to Sherlock Holmes it's one of my favorite series of all time and I also love reading retellings and new adventures written by modern day authors so this is something I'm super excited about and have had on my kindle for a few months now so need to get to then there are two audiobooks I wanted to add to this list and both of them are non-fiction so the first one is Men Who Hate Women by Laura Bates Laura Bates is one of my favorite non-fiction writers and one of my favourite feminist literature writers. Um, a lot of her books have had a massive impact on me. I think they're very insightful and upsetting but also empowering and accessible and must reads. I recommend them all the time. So Men Who Hate Women is actually her most recent work when I'm filming this video and I've been meaning to listen to it for a little while. I got it on audiobook not long after it came out. The subtitle pretty much sums up the topic of this one and it is from incels to pickup artists, the truth about extreme misogyny and how it affects us all. So I also think there's going to be a online focus within this one or at least a discussion of online culture and misogyny so I think that's one that will be really really like I said insightful and important. I also want to get to They Were Her Property by Stephanie E. Jones Rogers. This is actually one I picked up the audiobook for much more recently but do not want to leave languishing for a long time because I think it sounds like such an important piece of history. It's specifically about white women's contribution to black enslavement in the 1800s and I think that this is something that's really important to discuss because it's far more often discussed in the context of men being enslavers and not the way in which women supported the slavery system and benefited from it. So I'm really hoping to learn something from this book. But those are the 30 books I would like to read before I am 30. I mean, like I said, I'm not gonna beat myself up if I don't read them all, but I think it gives you an idea of what my priorities are and hopefully also an indication of what you'll be seeing me talk about over the next 12 months. If you've ever set yourself a list like this and have, and I, 
Let me know if you have any lists like this currently on the go, if there's any books that you'd like to read before you hit a certain age that you think are really important or that you're just really interested in. I'd also love to hear if you've read any of the books I've mentioned here and what you thought of them because it might encourage me to pick them up next. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring. Don't forget to check them out via the link in the description box and I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone.